Hey guys, last time on 2.6 we talked about the higher derivatives and we also have a quick like uh, review of uh, all the rules that we have to find the derivatives in the easier way. So on chapter 2, make sure you not have to find the derivatives of any function by two ways. First way is by the definition of derivatives and then second way by using the derivative rules. Okay, so for now today we're going to talk about 3.1, the increasing and, in and decreasing functions. Okay, let's talk about some like... Um, like old concepts before we jump into the content of set up 3.1 so we have a function is increasing if its graph moves up as x moves to the right and decreasing if its graph moves down as x moves to the right okay so this one is pretty much like straightforward at least to me so this one as you can see from left to right is going down right so we call it like decreasing and then for the other branch of the function from left to right it is increasing, right? So we always consider from left to right, not the other way around, okay? So by looking at any graphs in here to figure out whether it's increasing or decreasing, we must look at it from left to right, okay? And if it doesn't change at all, if it doesn't like increase or decrease, we're gonna call it a constant function, okay? And if you notice, um, to like put it back to the concept of slope in here, for decreasing function, we're gonna have the slope being negative for increasing function, we're gonna have the slope being like positive, and then for a constant function, we're gonna have the slope equals to zero. Okay, so this one to make it formal, let me put down like the definition of like increasing and decreasing function. Okay, so uh, increasing function is in there, it tells you that, well, um, as you move along on the right, like uh, like on the right hand side, of the, the x axis in there your x your y value will be like bigger okay for example if we talk about increasing function like this one in here okay like say this moment is like x equal to i remember, like seven and then the other moment is like x equal to like nine there as you can see the value for seven is lower than the value of x equal to nine right so this one is the value of seven and this one is the value of nine right um, not because 7 is less than 9, but because this value in here is like below this value in here, okay? That's why we have the increasing function in there. And then for uh, decreasing function, we're going to have a similar like scenario. So say this one is like, I don't know, like 1 and this one is, I don't know, like 5 in here or something. So the y value for 1 will be higher compared to the y value of 5. Okay, so this one is like, you know, like higher in terms of like position compared to this one in here. Okay, and that's why it's decreasing. Okay, in order to determine if the graph increases or decreases, we always look at the graph from left to right. So make sure you never actually look at from like right to left or, you know, from the center toward both sides. Uh, yeah, I don't know why, but then, you know, like a lot of things can happen, right? So make sure you always do it from left to right. Okay. And now, um, test for increasing and, de and decreasing functions. Okay, so like what I mentioned earlier, um, we're gonna use a slope in here to test whether it's increasing or decreasing, or even like con constant in here, and how to find a slope in here. We all know that we're gonna take the first derivative of the function, which is like at prime, to find the slope, right? And from there, if we have like a positive value, we have an increasing function. If we have a negative value, then we have a decreasing function. And if it happens to be zero, then it's a constant function, okay? And that's enough about a concept. Let's talk about the first problem of today. Increasing and decreasing functions. Example one, um, find the increasing and decreasing intervals for the function, verify your result with the, with the graph. Okay, so again, like for this part in here, like I just put the graph there for you guys to compare um, like your answer with the graph. But trust me, I'm not gonna ever like ask you to graph like any of these like um, nasty functions like in the test or in any assessment, okay? So don't, don't worry too much about graphing, okay? So first thing first in here, right? We have to find the slope in here or I have to find like the first derivative, right? So I'm gonna do f prime. And if you guys haven't recognized it already, this one is a fraction and then we have to use quotient rule for this. And for quotient rule, we're gonna have two parts, right? The formula for the quotient rule, if you have it down with you right now, it's going to look like f prime of x and then g of x and then minus f of x and then g prime of x and then divided by g square of x. 
or like GFX square, it doesn't matter like where the square goes. Okay, so let's let's talk about like the setup in here and just confirm in here, like even though the name of the whole function in here is F, um, like one of my advice in here will be like to ignore the name of it. Okay, like just consider like the, the top part is F and then the, but the bottom part is G and that's all you have to care about, okay? I know the name could be like confusing sometime, but don't worry about the like the name of the like given function at the beginning because to match up with the formula in here, it could be a little bit confusing. Okay, so in terms of the setup, we're going to get f equal to x squared, and then g equal to x plus 1, and then from there, I'm going to take the derivative of f, which gives me 2x, and then g prime in here equals to 1, okay? And then let me put everything together in here, so I'm going to get f prime of x equals to f prime times g, so we multiply these two together, and I'm going to take this, I multiply with the x, and also with the 1, right? Like here let me just do it slowly um 2x and then x plus 1 in here and then minus because the minus part in here is a feature of the quotient function okay and just in case you don't know or like you ha you can tell the difference between the product uh, rule and then also the quotient rule product rule we're talking about multiplication so that's why we have like um addition connecting like the two groups in there and then for quotient rule we're talking about like division right that's why we have a minus or a subtraction to connect the two groups okay and then uh, f in here, it is x squared, and then g prime is just 1, right? And then all over g squared, which is x plus 1 squared. Okay, let me simplify it really quick in here. So like I said earlier, I'm going to go ahead and multiply the two x in here. And then x squared times 1 is just be like x squared, right? So I'm having 2x squared plus 2x minus x squared, all over x plus 1 squared, right? And from there, if I go ahead and combine the, combine the like terms, I'm going to do um, 2, 2x squared minus x in here. And then that gives me x squared, right? So let me just, you know, like, to save the time, right? So um, that's like what we have after we simplify it, right? Now, what we're going to do is that uh, let me try to factor the top out. So, uh, okay, first of all, let me rewrite this one because... I having like a space issue with this thing so it's gonna be x squared and then okay that, that is ugly looking so x squared plus 2x and then divided by x plus 1 squared and then if I go ahead and factor it out I'm gonna get an x outside and then x plus 2 and on the bottom I'm keeping I'm keeping like everything the same way it is so I'm having this okay like this is a slope right and I told you guys like um if it's positive, we're gonna have an increasing function. If it's negative, it's decreasing. And if it's zero, we have a constant function. But this one is really hard to tell, right? But like, how do you know when is positive and when is negative? Well, let me show you a technique in here, okay? So we're gonna split this slope into like two parts, the top part and the bottom part, okay? The top part or the numerator, if you want to be fancy, um, you have to set it equal to zero. So then we're gonna get x equal to zero or x equal to negative 2 for each of them, okay? And, okay, let me highlight because it looks better. So then let me put pink in here for the zero part. And then let me put uh, blue for the x equal to negative 2 in there. And then we're going to do the same thing pretty much for the bottom. So bottom in here equal to 0, I'm going to get x equal to negative 1 two times but then just one value right and then let me put it in i don't know like green or something for this one okay and then now i'm gonna show you like a big big um method in here we call it a table of sign just in case you guys like wondering the name of them okay let's talk about it so we're gonna make a table okay an ugly table for my size and we're gonna have like a couple of like rows in here the first one it has to be x okay and then the next slide is for the top part which is x and then x plus 2 and then the next one is for the bottom part which is x plus 2 square and then the last one is for the whole fraction which is you know like f prime of x or if you want you can just copy this one and paste it down here okay but i just don't want to rewrite everything down that's why i'm just going for like f prime of x because this equals to like this right so you know like in short it's just gonna be f prime of x 
Okay, that's what we have for the first column. Okay, for the x value, it goes from negative uh, infinity all the way to positive infinity, right? And then we have a zero in here, we have a negative two, and we have a one, right? So we have like all three values in here, right? Let's arrange them from least to greatest, right? So the least one in here will be negative two, and then um, moving on, we have like a negative one, and then lastly zero, okay? So let me just, you know, like highlight them so then you guys can like keep track with what I'm doing really quick in here. Okay, so uh, let me go ahead and also highlight like, you know, the, the like the function in here too. Um, green, this one, and then lastly we have ping for the zero. All right, so now let's talk about um, how to complete this table, right? So for um, where it equals to um, zero, we're gonna have the negative. It's we're gonna have a zero under like where it's at negative two and then x plus two for like these here, right? And then with a similar reason, we're gonna have a zero in here and also a zero in here, okay? And if you're not sure like why like the zeros pops up in here, it's because like for this line here, we're gonna have like two zeros, right? One for the pink um, x and one for the blue x plus two, right? And then that's why we have like a zero in here and a zero in here, okay? But like for here, this position in here is it's gonna be like a random number, right? Like if you put negative one into this function right here, you're gonna get negative one times negative one plus two, which is a number, not zero, right? And um, matter of fact, to save the time in here, you don't have to find that number because it's not like worth it. So let me take out a check mark in here. Okay, so my like symbol, I'm gonna put like just like a symbol for like number because I don't want to find it, and sometimes it can you know like like waste your time finding that number, right? And then similarly in here you're gonna have a number which is not zero, it's just gonna be like different number, and I'm too lazy to find it, and I don't want you guys to find it either because it's like you know like wasting your time, okay? So now let's talk about like the position like of this value, this value, and this value. Okay, how do we get to the side like? what late lies on those three places that i just mentioned right so um notice that this one is the top part right and then this one is the bottom part of the fraction right i mean of the of the slope in here right so for this position in here if you take zero divided by any number you're gonna get a zero right and similarly you're gonna get like zero in here because zero divided by a number is a zero but for this position in here if you take a number divided by zero it will give you something undefined, right? So I'm gonna put like B and E in here for, you know, like doesn't exist because, you know, a number cannot be divided by zero, okay? Like wherever, whenever you have like a zero on the bottom or, okay, let me put that like this. This one in here is like E and E, okay? And then zero divided by any number, it is zero. So make sure you can tell the difference between this and this, okay? All right, now let's talk about the signs in here, right? Because I'm, I'm, I told you guys the name of this method is called the table of sign, right? And we need some size in here. Let me put it in, uh, I guess, brown here to make it like stand out for you guys. All right, so now I'm going to need you guys to get me a number like right in between, you know, negative infinity and negative two. So I would say pick three or something like that. So I'm going to go for like negative three in here because it's like, uh, smaller than negative two okay and put into the calculator um negative three you plug into this equation right here you're gonna get a number which is like positive right like i don't remember the value of it anymore but then trust me it's gonna be a positive number and if you were to have a negative number in here let me know okay and uh just to clarify um like what we about to do in here is that okay first of all let me just take out some things in here so then you know like we don't have to worry about like the space in here. Okay, let me clarify what I want to say earlier. Okay, so just imagine you put in like a negative three in here, right? So for the top part, it equals to negative three and then times negative three plus two, right? And that gives me, what is it? Negative three times negative one, which is three, a positive three, right? And that's how I have a positive right here, okay? And then for the bottom part in here, if I plug in a negative three, I'm gonna get negative three plus one. 
and I'll square and then like for sure it's gonna be positive because I have the square in here but if you want to do it now it's gonna be like negative two square and that is like a four in here and that's why I have like a positive in here okay and then in here if you plug in I don't know like something in between negative two and negative one I would say like negative 1.5 in here into the calculator I'm gonna do it short because I don't want to like waste the time um like writing everything down while you can put everything in here into the, into the calculator so if you plug in negative 1.5 into the top part and into the bottom part you're gonna get a negative for the top part and then you're gonna get a positive for the bottom part okay and between negative 1 and 0 I'm thinking negative 0.5 or if you want to you can also do like negative um, 0.1 right or like negative 0.9 I'm not gonna judge you for any values between you know like negative 1 and negative and zero um i like usually uh want to go for the middle point that's why i go with 0.5 but i'm not going to judge you if you want to use like negative 0.9 or negative 0.2 okay like that's fine too that's like completely okay that's normal okay and you shove it into the calculator for the top part and the bottom part you're gonna get a negative in here and a positive in here okay and lastly something that is bigger than zero i'm gonna go for one because i want to keep all the numbers like small but if you don't want one, you can go for like 5 or even like 10 or 100. As long as it's like bigger than 0, then you cool with it, okay? You shove it into the calculator for the top and for the bottom. You're going to get a positive in here and also a positive in here, okay? And now uh, for the function, right, like for the last row in here, what we're going to do is that we take the top part divided by the bottom part. So for here, like for here, I'm going to get positive divided by positive. I have a positive for here negative divided by positive i have a negative for here negative divided by positive i have a negative and then lastly i end up with a positive okay so let me just take out the errors in here all right so what does it mean right like what does it like tell us to do well since the question is only asking us for the increasing and decreasing like um intervals right it doesn't ask us anything about a constant interval in the test I might ask you something about constant interval, but at least not for now. So how can we write out the, like the final answer for this one? We're gonna use the table side for this one, of course, right? Okay, let me take out like the errors in here really quick because that looks annoying. All right, for the final answer in here, let me put it back in red. For increasing, we're gonna focus on, on the positive size in here, which is this one. Okay, let me change the color to, I don't know, um orange so this is positive and this is positive right that means that we are gonna have increasing from negative infinity all the way to negative two because this value in here is like right in between these two okay and the second parentheses are like the second uh, positive the second plus in here is right in between zero and positive infinity so i'm gonna put like a comma in here and zero to infinity okay if you want to be like mathematically like correct i'm gonna put um like a u in here for the union of course i mean un instead of using the um, comma in here so it goes like two way right you can do a u in here or you can do a comma i'm not gonna be like too judgy about it okay and then if you want to go for the decreasing interval well you're gonna do the same thing let me put it in uh purple so we have a negative in here and also a negative in here right what tells us that it's going to go from negative two to negative one and also from negative one to zero okay this is where a lot of people like confuse in here because like someone will ask me like well because it looks like a straight interval right so why can't i connect it and make it just become like from negative zero uh, from negative uh two to zero and in fact this is wrong okay like because if you notice it is not defined at negative one, right? So we have to drop it down at negative one. That's why we have like parentheses around the negative ones. Okay, we're not gonna take the value of negative one because it's like undefined right there, okay? So this is what we have for decreasing and this is what we have for increasing. And those are the final answers, okay? And let me take these out of the way before it gets to ahead. And green star for what you have to do for your part, okay? And let me take out like some marks in here it's just to make it easier to look at in case you want to like pause the video and look at this table of sign one last time. 
Okay. And in the test in here, um, you don't have to show me like the values that you plug in in here. So you don't have to show me this, 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 or this. Okay. Like to me, it's like wasting your time. I don't want you to like waste your time because you don't have a lot of time in the test. So you don't have to show me those values as long as you get like all those signs correctly. That's all I care about. Okay. And to double check with the picture right here, as you can see, we have increasing so this part in here is increasing and also this part in here is increasing right and to match up with our like answer in here we're stopping at like negative two and we start and we're starting from zero right and then for the um decreasing part we have like in between right so we talk talking about this part in here and then this part in here right and that is why we have to drop at the negative one in here because we have a vertical assumption of a negative one and it's not like a continuous like uh, interval for us to ride together okay so if you're doing the right thing on your part you should get two intervals of increasing and one interval of decreasing okay okay uh final comment the method that we use above is called the ta the table of signs where we must break the original function into a combination of either linear uh, polynomial of degree one or quadratic polynomial of degree two functions if the function is unfactorable, then the sign of the function is the same as the sign of the leading coefficient. Okay, so what does it mean in here is that like this one in here, like unfactorable, it, this one is just like like a tips for you guys to do it. But typically what I mean in here is that um, notice that this function right here and this function right here, it either has the power of one or the power of two, right? So if you have like the power of three in there, it's not applicable anymore, okay? If you have a power of three in here, you have to split it into like, you know, the X in here for the first row. Just, Im just imagine that you're gonna have like a table in there. And then like, this is the original X, like where we always have X, right? But then the, the X cubed in here, always split into, you know, like the X and it's also into the X square in here. And it's gonna take you like two rows for it, okay? But make sure it either has to be like degree one or degree two only, like we cannot, um, we cannot go bigger than that, okay? So make sure you split them out, okay? And then a quick example in here before we move on to the next page is, what is it? Uh, suppose we have the derivative equals to like this weird function in here. And then since this one is not factorable anymore and then it's like the power in here is like four, right? It's not like one or two anymore. It's really big, right? I know it's like really big and then it's unfactorable so we cannot go down to, you know, the power of one or two anymore. So then the coefficient in here is one. Why is it one? Because there's not like there's nothing in front of the x fourth, right? So we can imagine that there's a invisible one in there. And because this one in here is positive, well, it doesn't have any negative in front of it, right? So it has to be positive. So then this function right here is always positive. What does it mean? It means that we always gonna get like a what is it? We always gonna get a. Um, positive like everywhere just like this one and i think i delete like a like a, a thing in here but yeah so if you know this this thing in here um it's always positive right like no matter what number or like what interval you're talking about it's always positive why is it because if you consider like the coefficient in here a two in here it equals to one which is positive that's why it's positive in here but it's not the same case for this one okay like it's not applicable in here okay um and in here like well we know that when we get a positive sign here it's increasing right and when we have a, like a negative sign here or like when we get some slope less than zero it is um decreasing okay so again if you have any questions on this one make sure you stop the video and talk to me before you keep watching it okay okay number two critical numbers and their use in the previous examples, to determine the increasing and decreasing intervals, we use the fact that for a continuous function f prime of x, or like the slope in here, can change the size only at x values, where f of x, or at prime of x equals zero, or when, uh, or at x values where f of x is undefined. These two types of numbers are the critical numbers of f. Okay, so what do I mean by that? If you look back at the, this table in here, I know it's like a lot going on already. So let me change the color to, I don't know, uh, sign, something like this. 
All right. So if you notice for where we have like a zero, say for this one in here, the side change, right? Like from positive to negative, from po negative to positive in here. Or when we have like an undefined here, the side also change. Not applicable for this one, but it will be for the other one. Yeah, like this one is not applicable because we have like undefined values in here at x equal to negative one but then the sign here doesn't change right but then for some other cases in here i i can like guarantee that the sign will change um so okay so this is what i mean in here so technically all the values that you found in here like this one this one and this one in here whenever you like set the top and the bottom equal to zero like whatever values you got in there we call them the critical numbers okay and I'm going to talk more about when we talk about the, the, the examples in here. All right. So if F is defined C where, where C, then C is the critical number of F. If F prime is equal to zero or F prime of C is undefined. Okay. So this is like the definition for critical numbers. We either have like a zero in here or undefined here. Okay. Um, this definition requires that the critical number is be in the domain of the function f for example x equal to zero is not a critical number of the function one over x okay so um how should i explain this okay one over x what is the domain of one over x right like uh, it has everything the domain in here of this function it is everything except for zero why is that so because if you put a zero in here it's going to be undefined right because one divided by zero is like it's not defined like if you put it into the calculator it's going to show you an arrow and if you want to think about it just like you know like if you have like one candy and then you want to share it with you know like no one one candy no one for like divided into no one it doesn't make sense right because like what are you like sharing it with? who are you sharing it with right like it doesn't make sense for that scenario to happen that's why it's like doesn't define in math okay and um because it's not like a part of the domain in here um this one is not like 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 a, a number to us for to to even consider about like like the continuous um value in here okay all right so let's talk about the pictures in here so the two scenarios for the critical numbers it could be the zero case or the undefined case okay for the zero case we saw it before like if the top part equals zero, we're gonna have like a breakdown of the size in here. It can go from, you know, like positive to negative. Or in another scenario, it can look like this, where it goes from negative to positive. And then this one is like, you know, like the zero part, okay? And then for the undefined part, we have the dashed line or the vertical asymptotes in here. Just like my part, like the, the last picture, if you know this, this is the vertical asymptotes, right? Like x equals to negative one in here is a critical value because it's the zero for the bottom part right like this one is for the bottom part and we all know that we have a, if we have a zero on the bottom we're going to get an undefined value which is you know like doesn't exist right so this one the only reason why it becomes a critical number it is because it gives the function undefined value okay so those are the two scenarios in here and then let's talk about my i mean like example two in here let me like do two examples for you okay and then you're gonna help me do from c to f okay like from c to f i'm gonna help you with the first two okay so find the current numbers of the following functions okay first of all i'm gonna find a derivative of f in here and in short it's gonna be what is it like nine over seven and then x squared and then minus seven, right? And let me take this out the way. Okay, next step, we'll set it equal to zero, right? And then we're gonna set it equal to like undefined later on. And I'm gonna show you guys how to. Um, okay, so this one, if I set it equal to zero, well, first of all, I'm gonna add it to both sides, right? Like the seven in there, so I can cancel the seven and I end up having nine sevens. X squared equal to seven. And after that, I multiply both sides by seven over nine so that I can get rid of the the 9 and the 7. Okay. Okay, let's do it slowly for some people because I, I found it like a lot of people will get confused over this one. So, 
Okay, let's say we at this step, right? And I, I, you want to cancel the 9 and the 7 to get like the x by itself, right? Well, what you're going to do is that you need to flip this fraction. So by flipping, it's going to become 7 over 9. And you multiply to both sides of the equation so that the 7s cancel out with a 7. And then a 9 cancel out with a 9, okay? So then on the right, on the left hand side, we end up having just x squared. And then on the right side, 7 is 7 over 1. So I'm going to get 49 over 9, okay? Lastly, we're going to take the square of both sides. And I mentioned in the last video, so ready, if you guys remember, wherever you have like the 2 in here, that means we're going to have two values. So it's going to be plus minus, right? So the answer in here would be x equal to plus minus 7 over 3, okay? And what else do we do in here? So that is to, that is like how to find the critical numbers in here. Um, okay, so that is what we have for the case of like x equal to zero, oh, for the zero case, right? And now for the second part, we're gonna set f prime of x, which is also nine seven x squared minus 7 equals to undefined for the undefined case. Okay, unfortunately, this function is defined everywhere, right? If you, okay, can you think of a value for x where you plug in and then you get something undefined? No, right? Like if you plug in a negative number, it will work. If you plug in a positive number, it will work also. Even if you plug in a zero in there, that will work, right? So then there's nothing for this case, no solution. That's why the final answer for this problem will be just these two, x equal to plus minus seven over three, and those are the two, the only two critical numbers that we have. Okay. And now let's talk about part B in here. So let me get rid of this one in here, really quick. Okay, let me just put the answers in here. So x equal to plus minus seven thirds. Okay, for part B, let me put it in pink. So first step first, we're going to have to find a she prime in here. Okay, if you notice, this one we have to use a chain rule, right? And again, let me do the setup really quick of uh, uh, finding like which one is F. The top part should be F. And then the bottom part should be G. And then you're going to take the derivative of each of them, which is 6X in here and then 27X squared in here, right? Okay, so first thing first, we multiply these two together. I'm gonna get 54 x cubed. Oh no, x fourth. 54 x fourth. And if I multiply this one in here, it means that I have to multiply this 27 x squared with 3 x squared and also with negative 12, right? So if I put it into my calculator, I'm gonna get a positive 81 x to the fourth power and then minus 12 times 27, that is. 324x squared, okay? And then all over g squared, which is 9x cubed, all squared, okay? So let me get rid of this so that I have more space to do my work. All right, so now, next step, I'm gonna simplify everything together. So let me go ahead and simplify these two together. So 54 plus 81, it is 135x fourth, and then minus 3, 24x squared. Over this one, if I do it out, it's gonna be like 81 in there, and then x to the sixth power, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel like the two x in here, and then two x in here, which is like two in here, and also like another two x in here, which is a four in here, okay? And then I don't think um, we can uh, like sim we can simplify anything for the 125 or 324 like or like the 81 so let me just put it as 135 x squared minus 324 over 81 x to the fourth power okay and let me rewrite this one because it looks ugly okay there we go so now what's next well we have to set it equal to zero right so what do we do we're gonna set the top part equal to zero and then we're gonna do the bottom part equal to zero so the top part i'm gonna do like blue so that equal to zero, it is, okay, in short, it's gonna look like this. It's gonna look like 135 x squared equals to 324, right? And I'm gonna divide both sides by 135. 
and then that drops out to 135 on the right side and after that I'm gonna take the squares on both sides and that gives me like a plus minus sign here and then I'm gonna take out a square in here and then if you do it into the calculator it's gonna give you what is it plus minus 2 square 15 divided by 5 Okay, in the Casio, it's like really nice if, if you like plug this thing into the calculator, it's gonna give you like the nice, answer, the nice answers that I have in here. I'm not sure if it works for, you know, the TI or like any other calculator, but I'm pretty sure there's like ways to do it. If you can, um, YouTube your calculator on how to convert um, fraction or like decimal to fractions or how to rationalize um, fractions or like square root into the TIs. And I'm pretty sure YouTube can, can show you how to do it okay so then these are like the final answer for the top part and let me do the same thing before the bottom part let me put it in blue if I go ahead and set the bottom part equal to zero we're talking about a case of undefined right because we all know that um, like if the bottom equal to zero like anything divided by zero is undefined right so that's why this one is like undefined case and if I go ahead and do that I'm gonna get 81 x fourth equal to zero and after that I'm gonna go ahead and divide both sides by 81 zero divided by 81 is zero I'm gonna have that and then lastly I'm gonna take the fourth root of both sides and as you can imagine there will be like four numbers in here but then the square root of zero is just zero so we end up having like zero four times like this just because we have a four in here okay but I'm not gonna be too judgy for this one because they are like exactly the same right so you only have to rewrite zero once. You don't have to write like multiple times. So we had like the finance answers in here. Let me just put them together on the top part in here. Okay, so there's a three in here. And then the final answer for part B, it is zero for this case and also plus minus 2 square 15 divided by 5 for the zero case and just to confirm real quick this one is a zero case and then this one is a undefined case because we should have like two cases right okay so like I said before let me back up the start here for your part you have to do C D E F okay and now let's move on to the last objective application because you know business major we have to know how to apply math into like real life problems right so the ordering and transportation cost c in hundred dollars for an arm for an automobile automobile okay english is like my weakness okay for an automobile uh dealership is dealership is modeled by this function right here this one where x is the number of automobiles ordered, uh, find the intervals on which c is increasing or decreasing. Okay, so same thing, right? So whenever you see the word increasing or decreasing in here, you know what to do. First of all, I have to find the derivative. Second of all, um, create like the table if you have to to find which one is positive or, or and which one is positive or and which one is negative based on the sign on the table, right? And then state your answer. Okay. So, uh, let me find the derivative first, right? And uh, to make it easier, let me just distribute the 10 into the parentheses. So I'm gonna get like 10 divided by x and also plus 10x divided by x plus three. Okay, for this part first, I'm gonna rewrite it as 10 to the negative one. Okay, so then when I take the derivative of it, it's, it will become negative 10 and then x to the negative two. And then for the second part in here, let me put it in pink. This one is a quotient rule, as you can tell, right? So the F part in here, it is 10X. And then for the G part in here, it equals to X plus G. F prime in here, it equals to 10. And then G prime in here, it equals to one, right? So then the derivative of it, it equals to plus in here. And then F prime G, so that is 10X plus 30 and then minus 10x times one, which is 10x, right? And then all over g squared, which is x plus three squared, and then cancel, cancel. So we end up having, what is it? Okay, let me put it in here. 
negative 10 and then divided by x squared and then plus 30 divided by x plus 3 squared. Okay, so how can we figure how to do this one out? Well, first of all, it's not like one fraction, right? So we have to come bind them together and they're just one fraction and warning just a little heads up in it is going to be a long problem okay so let me put like a green star in here before i forget to do so all right so now deep breath okay we're going to need to take the common denominators in here to find to so that we can come out of two fractions and here into one fraction so for this one uh fraction the first one i'm going to go ahead and multiply the top and bottom by x plus three square to the top part and also to the bottom part. For the second fraction, I'm gonna go ahead and multiply it by x squared. So then they all gonna get the same denominator, okay? So next step, let me put it in, you know, like brow in here. So the common denominator in here is obviously just, you know, like x squared and also x plus three squared. Putting them together, we don't do anything, right? Okay, for the top part in here, for this one, I'm gonna FOIL it out and then um, you can do it in your own like free time. But, you know, like just to, you know, like cut the time short in here, I'm going to FOIL it down and I'm also going to uh, combine the lie terms in here, okay? And then that gives me x squared and then plus 6x plus 9. And then I'm going to multiply all this by negative 10. So that gives me negative 10x squared and then minus 60x minus 90, okay? And then for the second part, for this one in here, if you multiply everything together, you're going to get a 30 x squared right and if you were to combine the lie terms in here you're going to get 20 x squared so let me put it in here so this is gone this is gone and then minus 60 x and lastly minus 90. okay so now um before we jump into the problems in here well you know if you notice there's a common thing for you know the 20 the 60 and also the 90 right so let me pull that out really quick. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna like factor out a 10 from each of these. So let me take out a zero from each of them and then put a 10 in front of them for like factoring. Okay, so this is what I have. We know that 10 is always a positive number, right? So you can just disregard a 10 if you want to. So then the thing that we have to worry about in here is like this one in here. Okay, and now table of sign method. So I know you guys are gonna hate this one like a lot, but there's no like better way, I think, to my experience. This one, the table of sign is the best method that you can have. So first row in here, I'm gonna talk about the x value, and then second row is the top part, which is two x squared minus six x minus nine. Okay, a lot of people will ask me like, why don't I break the top part into, you know, like, factoring into like x minus something and x minus something well the thing in here is that this one is unfactorable okay so if you like try to factor it out no it's not going to help because you cannot find the two numbers that like match the x method in here so then factoring would go nowhere okay and you don't have to do it and it's okay because this one is like the power of two right and we're good with it we're cool with it so that's all right we don't have to worry too much about it all right and then what's next the next row we're gonna get x squared in here and also the next row we have x plus three square so these two rows in here are actually for the bottom part while this one is also for the top part only okay so let me write the bottom like nicely okay and last row in here we're gonna have the space for f prime of x or in this case c prime okay so now what we're gonna do is that we're gonna have to find all the values for like you know like the zeros for the top and bottom part in here for the bottom is easy it's just gonna be like zero for this one and a negative three for this one right for the top part i'm not gonna ask you guys to show the full work in there so if you have the calculator in there make sure you youtube or google on how to apply the quadratic formulas or like how to how to solve for quadratic functions in the ti okay like I'm gonna like let you guys use your calculator to obtain the zeros for quadratic functions. And I don't think I'm gonna be that evil to give you guys some ugly function like this in the test, but you know, for homework, it could be evil. You guys have seen it already. And at least for this worksheet, um, this one is like bad. 
So I'm going to go ahead and use the calculator to get the zeros for the top part. And I end up having x equals to negative 1.1 and also 4.1. Okay. Again, I'm not going to try to solve for the zeros in here because it's taking like way too much time. But you know, like just you must, like if you must know the reason why it happens to be like that, then um, the hint in here would be, um, if you remember the quadratic formula, it goes like x equals to negative b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. And this is exactly how I got these two answers, okay? I'm not gonna show all the work because like I said, you guys don't have to do it for the test. Even for the homework, I don't think it's going to be that evil. You guys, you guys can shove like this equation into the calculator, and it's going to give you like these two values, like very nicely and ready. Okay, so you don't have to like do a lot of work for this part. Okay, and then earlier I told you from the bottom part we're going to get a zero and also a negative three, right? So let's arrange them really quick in here. Uh, let me put in red. So I'm going to get negative infinity in here, and then also a positive infinity in here. And then the smallest number is negative 3. And next up, we get a negative 1.1. And then we also have like a 0 and then 4.1. Okay, let me extend this one a little tiny bit. bit. Because I need some space for the infinity. Okay, that looks better. All right, now what do we do? Well, this one is just the calculator part. You're gonna get something in between the values for the intervals in here. So like what we did earlier, uh, I'm gonna put in, I don't know, like a negative two in here into the calculators and I'm gonna get like a plus in here, plus in here, plus in here, okay? And um, I usually forget this one, but remember like earlier before we plug in the, like the size or the numbers in here, we have to consider about the zeros, right? So let me get back to that really quick. The zero from the negative three is like right here. And then the zero for the x squared is like right here. And then for the top part, we have zero in here and in here, okay? For the rest of the places like that, we're gonna put like number in here, number in here, number, 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 and just, you know, like numbers all over the place. Why? Because, I mean, you can solve for it, but it's not worth it. So don't waste your time solving for it, okay? And now let's get back to, you know, like plugging values for this one. So between negative 3 and negative 1.1, I'm going to do, uh, what is it? Oh, actually, my bad, my bad. This one it should be negative 4, not negative 2. My bad. And this one is negative 2 now. Okay. Yeah, sorry for the uh, confusing for the negative 4. The first one in here, it has to be something that less than negative 3. And negative 2 is actually bigger than negative 3, right? And in between in here, I'm going to do negative 0.1 in here, just to be like cautious with the, the number in here. And then for this one, I'm going to do 1. And then for this one, I'm going to do, I don't know, like 5 in here. Okay, and then uh, in short, let me like show you guys all the size in here, because I did like my part, and then I plugged in all the numbers already, so I got all the size like in, in like advance already. But make sure you double check with this one, right? Like make sure you check all the size in here just to make sure we have like a good answers in here. I like triple check on it already. So I'm, I know that it's right, but just in case, right? Okay, so this is what I have to have like in like, you know, those numbers into this table. And now C prime, what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna, okay. So my trick in here is that it doesn't matter for, you know, like multiplication or division for the size in here. So if you have like, um, if you like have to think about it in the easy way, I would recommend like doing multiplication, okay? So in this case, if you have like three pluses in here, like if you multiply three positive numbers together, you're gonna get a positive number, right? If you multiply three numbers that are positive, again, you're gonna get a positive number. For this case, you're gonna get a negative number, negative number and, neg and positive number in here, right? Okay, and, and in between the places in here, now it's gonna be a little bit kind of like hard. For the top part, um, here, let me mark down all the places where we have like zero on the bottom first. So we have a zero in here and a zero in here for the bottom, right? That means that we're going to have a D and E right there. So D and E in here and then D and E in here because we cannot have zero on the bottom, okay? And uh, we end up having like two spaces left, right? And those are for like the top part. So let me highlight out in 
green this is zero and this is zero and this is like for the top part right we're talking about the top so zero divided by any number we're going to end up having a zero in there and a zero in there okay so now let's talk about increasing and decreasing interval right so if you're like lazy like me you can just put Increasing in here, decreasing in here, increasing, decreasing, and increasing in here so that you know, right? But of course, I'm not going to accept it for like a final answer in the like, in the exam. So make sure you lay all of them down. So increasing interval, I'm going to get what is it from negative infinity all the way to negative 3. And then negative 3 to negative 1.1. And then lastly, I have from 4.1 to positive infinity. For decreasing, I'm gonna get, what is it, from negative 1.1 all the way to zero, drop it, and then from zero to 4.1. And these are my final answers. Okay? And if you have to match it up with the graphs in here, let me take up away the stable in here so that we can see the graphs. Okay, much better, right? Like, it's cleaner now. I would take, like, everything away. Okay, so for the increasing, let me put it in blue. Wait. Increasing. What do we have in here? We have increasing, like, this junk in here is increasing. And then, uh, what else? This junk in here is also increasing. And then... The very last part, it is from where to where. From 4.1, right? It should be like this little piece in here. And then, okay, so this is for that, and this is for that, and then this is for that. Okay, and then for the decreasing, let me put it in green. I'm going to get this in here and also that in here. So this one in here is pretty much like obvious, like we all can see it. But then for this one, I'm going to say it's not as obvious in here. Um, okay, let me zoom out this picture so you guys can all agree with me. This picture in here is not actually just like going down. Okay, if you like plug it into the graph, if you like zoom it more down, it's not like this at all. Okay, it's like how to say it? It's like like this, and then at two point like, uh, and then at uh, four point one, it's gonna be like this. But then this one in here is not that curvy, so that you guys don't like see it increasing. But trust me, it it does increase for that part. Okay, it's just like. You know like slightly okay let me stop and exaggerate it and then let me just zoom it out like in a nice way for you guys to see it okay so this is like a, a a picture of like this one right there like a zoom out version i mean a zoom in version in there so as you can see like this is like 4.1 is a break point here that's why this one is for decreasing and then this one for increasing it's just like hard to tell because you know the graph is like so small i tried to i try my best to input it there so that we can check on our answer but you know like the image is not the best thing that we have in here and if you do the right thing on your part you can see that this part in here is increasing and then this part in here is decreasing so you should have like one in increasing interval and one decreasing interval for your part okay and i put a star ready so you know what to do and let me know if you have any questions, okay? Thank you for your listening. Take care and have a great day. Bye-bye.